This is the new Aston Martin DB12. It takes over from the DB11. But whereas Aston called that a GT, a Grand Tourer, it's coined a new catchphrase for this car. Grand is not enough. This is the world's first Super Tourer. Obviously it's evolved from the DB11, like I said, and it is unmistakably an Aston Martin. But there's quite a bit different about this car. Design-wise, you'll notice there's a big new front grille, and that is functional as well as aesthetic. There are new headlights, even the side strakes are styled slightly differently than before. These door mirrors are more slender. They've got a full frame now, you'll see that inside, and actually when you look into them, you see the wonderful rear arches. Overall, surprisingly, the car is a little bit shorter and a little bit more narrow than the DB11. And the reason for the width change actually is to do with those mirrors. Despite that, the tracks, front and rear, are wider, so it's got a better stance. And adding to that, of course, are these new wheels. They're 21 inch rims as standard. And they feature these lovely new Michelin Pilot Sport 5 tires. That's Martin's the first manufacturer to use them as original equipment. You also notice at the front that the splitter is much lower, this apron here, and that's for aerodynamic purposes. It also makes the car look considerably more aggressive. Anyway, no matter what you think of the exterior and how different it is to the DB11, you should see the interior. This is where all the money has gone. Immediately, the interior stands out as something rather special, and it's arguably the only part of the DB11 that really needed updating. We've got a whole new dashboard. The big talking point is the digitalization of it. So you've got a 10.25 inch touchscreen in the middle, you've got digital instruments in front of the driver, but to me, it's more than that, and Aston Martin has cleverly not relied solely on the touchscreen. It's got a lot of physical controls, and the great news is that every single one of them is tactile to use. You've got fan control, you've got volume control for the stereo, you've got temperature control for the climate control, and they're all lovely, mechanical, knurled controls. And that is something we've been asking for for a long time from car manufacturers. In the centre console here, you have this little drive selector nub, I suppose you might call it. A bit like what Porsche is doing, and it's very solid feeling. It's got a nice little bit of leather over the top of it. It's quite tactile to use, and it's very satisfying. And in around it are all the driving controls. In front of it is a big engine start stop button, which is quite pleasing, and it is unbelievably chunky in the way it turns between the different drive modes. We're used to GT Sport and Sport Plus from Aston Martin and individual now as well, where you can customize the different settings. But this car also has a wet setting, which is interesting. And that kind of hints at where Aston Martin is going with this car. It's broadened its remit considerably. And because of that wet setting, it means that the standard, the default GT mode, isn't as soft as it would otherwise need to be. So it means that the GT mode is a bit sportier than it used to be. And even saying that, the car is still very, very supple, very, very composed, and you could drive all day anywhere in it. Asmar is particularly proud of this new generation of dampers. They're adaptive dampers, electronically controlled as before, but they have a much wider operating window. And Asmar is as bullish to claim that it has a much wider operating window than any of its rivals. And what are its rivals? Well, it's not very clear cut actually. Aston Martin showed us plenty of graphs showing us a few different potential rivals. And it's saying that the Bentley Continental GT is potentially one, but actually that's softer and people drive it a bit slower if you like. Whereas this is aimed perhaps more at the Ferrari Roma and maybe McLaren GT, etc. So it's very much a sporty car. As I say, in GT mode, you could drive it anywhere. You could drive it on the back roads of Ireland. Suspension is supple, it's easy to drive, the controls are not taxing in any way. Then, when you put it into Sport or Sport Plus settings, it really, really comes alive. And there's a real texture of the road comes through the tires, through the suspension. You can really feel what's going on. It feels far more engaging than the DB11 ever did. And the steering is a bit of a highlight, actually. Whether you're on a really twisty road or uh, flying down these sweeping French countryside roads here. It just responds as you'd like it to. It isn't overly direct, and yet it is pleasingly direct when the roads turn particularly twisty. It's just a really good balance. One of the other aspects of this car that's new is an electronically controlled rear differential. And it's the first time actually in a DB car, and it, it works with all the other systems. as a whole integrated control system at work here. And it's seamless, you just choose the driver setting you like most. But when you dial into it, you can really feel the differential at work. And in Sport 
the Sport Plus mode in particular, you can feel it locking up more. It's a bit more aggressive. Um, it causes the car to yaw a bit more, so you have slight more oversteer coming out of the tighter corners. And that's really satisfying, actually, for somebody who loves driving. It's really pleasing. On the flip side, it also makes the car safer. It's better for fast uh, lane changes, for evasive maneuvers, and because it's electronically controlled, it can go from 0% locked to 100% locked in you know 100 milliseconds or 135 milliseconds i think the figure was so it's very very fast acting and it works with all the other systems to just make the car feel good the last thing i will say about how it drives and something that will stick with you after you drive it for the first time is how well integrated everything is it's all very very polished it feels like all the systems are working together to deliver the driving experience and nothing stands out as unusual so brakes for instance they feel good they work well and yet it's got an integrated brake system that varies that as well so it's all beautifully integrated it just means you get on with the job of driving and that's what this car should be all about That's our first look at the new Aston Martin DB12. And cheesy catchphrase aside, it is a significant step up from the DB11 before it. It still does the GT thing very well. In fact, it does it better than before. And yet, at the other end of the scale, it is far more of a sports car. It is more dynamic, more engaging. It's very exciting to drive. We can't wait to drive it again. If you liked our video of the DB12, make sure you check out our written review. It's on a website, it's completecar.ie, and it's a great resource for finding your next new car.